vetted any of those who are the defendants? We have not, the defendants, and I don't know if Mr. Sharp was getting ready to do that, based on what we submitted to them, we do not know if there's any parts that they agree with or not. We know that everything that Mr. Shaw has sent us, we're in dispute, are in dispute with us. All right. Okay. And so we, All right. So I'll, I'll just take by the numbers and then we'll move on to any other <coughs> persons that, that wish to be heard about. So what's, what are we, what are you marking that um, February 21st interview as? This is going to be 379, excuse me, 378, Yankee, Delta. Okay. Alright. Has that already been sent to all defense counsel as well? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, all right. Sure, you're fine. You're fine. Look, what's your intention to go through my first or? Yeah, uh, I, I, but I want them to at least queue it up. So why? Okay, we'll take the first one. I believe that's at three fifty nine fifty to four four zero zero twenty, and it apparently the first three, Your Honor, are all statements made by. Investigators, I believe they're all by investigator Gaither. Gaither. All right, let me just kind of flesh out as well, just for purpose of record in our discussion. Number two is 408 40 to 409 40, and number three is 410 55 to 411 05. Right. And the first one you've, you've indicated that Gaither gives a speech about the need for people to step up and cooperate. Number two, Gaither gives a speech about the work they have done. And number three, Gaither gives a speech about doing this to protect Casey's baby girl. Right. And, and obviously speech is, is, is my commentary, but it's, it's essentially the narratives given by detectives throughout the interview, which are basically giving argument and, and kind of parroting the state's argument throughout this case, which I think is improper and unnecessary and, and fails 403. Because there's no probative value to uh, investigator Gaither pontificating about uh, the need to protect the community and the need for witnesses to come forward and her her quest to protect Mr. Copeland's child and things of that nature. So, I, I mean, they speak for themselves. So, Your Honor will hear and then I guess we can argue about it. Okay. All right. And right, the emails are sent to you about two minutes. And right for reference on the transcript, this would be page 13, line 19 through page 14, line 3. Cause I ain't did I never done nothing. I didn't. I 
Okay. All right. Why does the state believe that that are that that port that's admissible? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Copeland testified that Detective Gaither, um, during the course of any of these interviews, were forcing him to name a suspect. Um, what? She's doing here this so for context, this interview is the day after Mr. Copeland, his child, and his child's mother has been shot at. And if you can recall in the February 20th interview when he was with Detective Curry, which has been played before the jury, Detective Curry attempted to get Mr. Copeland to tell him who did it. Um, he did not. If you can recall, he would not say who did it. Um, Detective Curry went into a conversation with him saying, I know you know, I can tell by your body language that you know. Then when he was by himself with Deshaun, his girlfriend, he told his girlfriend, I know who killed me. I, I know I'm not killed me. I know who shot at me. This is the next day in which they knew that he had a relationship with Gaither. Um, if you can recall in that February 20th interview, they kept telling him, you need to talk to Gaither. You need to call Gaither. And now Gaither is trying to get him to come forward with whomever he saw in um, the, day, the day that he was shot at. And so what Gaither is doing during this portion is telling him, I can't stop them from shooting at you. I can't stop them from doing anything if you don't tell me what happens. And majority of this interview is her trying to encourage him to tell what he knows. And that is, again, in contradiction to what Mr. Copeland has said on the stand that one that they were forcing him. They were not. And you're, you can see throughout the conversations here, they're never forcing him to do anything. Two, Mr. Copeland eventually says that I wasn't, you know, that Tay never killed me. I think he said, I swear on my child's grave or my mom's grave that Tay never did it. And this whole entire interview is them talking to him about what has been happening the shootings, the retaliatory shootings, and encouraging him to, to tell them who he knew shot at him, his child, and his child's mother. So I think this is relevant, one, to contradict Mr. Copeland's in-court testimony that they were forcing him to do anything. Two, to show how the police were attempting to get him to give information, which was in a calm fashion, which was in a fashion to get him comfortable enough to be ready and prepared to make to make an identification. And so we believe it's relevant to so to show the jury they weren't forcing him to do anything. Mr. Short? Well I think if you look at that exchange in isolation, um it it is a narrative by the detective. Um it's not prior inconsistent statements by Mr. Copeland, but uh, you might say it's not that egregious or, you know, what's the big deal? I think as we go on and we discuss the next two excerpts, it kind of builds upon itself in, in forming this narrative of people are not coming forward, our job is so difficult, we got to do this to protect the community. We got to do this to protect children. And that's my concern is pushing that narrative through, uh, Gaither's words during these interviews are admitted for uh, the express purpose of Mr. Copeland's prior and consistent statement. Let, so, let, me, let me make a suggestion. Why don't I just listen to the three yep. together and then, um, we can, we can have another discussion. Okay. Yeah, I was a suspect. I can't, I can't ride over what nobody else did. This 
my case. This is my case. If you was a suspect, what you would have got locked up that night? That night. You admitted to shooting back, you would have got locked up that night. Am I correct? Okay, so I'm asking you, who the fuck shot at you? Either you gonna tell me or you not, or you just gonna stay, stay in this predicament that you're in. But you're not helping yourself. And you're going to the street, the street trying to kill you. I ain't going to the street. I ain't going to the street. If you want, you want to tell me the first time. My objection to to uh, what the playing of what Investigator Gaither says is that Investigator Gaither, again, not the intended declarant of, of these statements, these out of court statements, is essentially making an argument that the jury will hear that this is it's a future dangerousness argument. It's it's an argument that, you know, you're either on the side of the 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 quote unquote gangsters or you're on the side of the people that are trying to protect children. Um, it, it, it presents a, uh, a false dichotomy and also a, a, uh, it invites the jurors to consider uh, subjects and, and, and consider things that are not supposed to be in their purview as yes. the finder of fact. Well, future dangerousness, the protecting the community. <coughs> okay, what, okay, tell me where... In this particular, from 359.50 to well, 411.05, that you will want me to invite me to look at for future dangerousness? Um, I believe it is around 410.55, where essentially uh, Investigator Gaither is saying to Mr. Copeland, okay, you're not cooperating. Hold on if you, don't, you said 410.55? I, I believe it's. it's hey, right. Can you give me the page references for that, please? I, I don't believe that he's saying this. I don't know what he's saying. And essentially... No, what, around 410. I, just, I need to know the... Oh, uh, what page 410? Yes, ma'am. That will be around page 28. All right. And I don't have the transcript in front of me, the state's transcript, but with the part that I'm, I'm referring to is where she says, Woody, you know, you're not talking. You're not cooperating. You might not care about your little girl, but I do. I'm going to protect your little girl. <laughs> And I, I think that's improper. It puts the, it, imp again, it improperly uh, presents this dichotomy of where the where the police are the good guys and the protectors of of children, away from you know the bad guys who are out warring in the streets. And and I just believe that that's an improper statement. Um, a, it's not true, but B, it's an improper statement that that. Uh, 
invites the jurors to uh, consider things other than the than the evidence in this case. Okay, you're saying that, okay, I, I'm looking at page 28, um, line 10 or thereabouts, Detective Gaither. Um, I'm not saying everybody out to get you, but the folks that are out to get you, obviously they're coming for you. And me as a police officer, I don't give two shits about your life, but I care about your baby's life. Right. But when I care about her life, Detective Gaither, she can't get Copeland and my life and my girl, my girl life, Gaither, exactly. So help me, help me do this shit. And then, um, Copeland, they out now. They, they, they out there by self, by they self. Um, but then you're not telling me nothing. That's Gaither. Right. And he says, cause I'm in jail. And then she goes on to say, you're here right now. And this is uh, page 29, starting page 29. They out there by themselves and the folks that shot at y'all are probably still out there as well. Probably still out there as well. Um, in, in my, my most strenuous objection is just about the comments about protecting his daughter. I don't think that's appropriate. Any anything any other portions that you want to point? In, in are, you, are you saying that the entirety of it, or are you just saying the, the, that particular section? Right, that, that particular section about the the, the child, and I, I think that fails under uh, four hundred three. It's not probative. Again, it's it's the investigator talking, um, so she doesn't have any personal knowledge of the of the facts of this case. It's not really the witness presenting evidence. And uh, again, I think it uh, confuses the issue and it's likely to inflame the passions of the jurors and it's prejudicial to our clients. Well, if, if, if there was some testimony that Mr. Copeland was in a vehicle with, with his um, significant other, his baby, outside of his house, and they were shot at. Yes, this, okay. this is this so is, they were shot at. So, yeah. so, so, I'm sorry. This is this interview, just for context, is two days after that. Yes. Session. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's not. I mean, she's got some basis to ask him those particular ask him the, or appeal to him in terms of what he, you know, what's going on in his life and. And her investigation, like, don't you want to you know, get at the folks that, or at least tell who it is that that, that shot you, shot at you? Well, let me let me because she's investigating. I'm not I'm this, not correct? criticizing her questioning of Mr. Copeland. Of course, yeah, she has the right in the interrogation room to appeal to whatever she wants. I'm just saying, not every, even if it's even if it's quite honestly, if even if it's decent interrogation techniques, doesn't necessarily mean the the words of the officer are exposed to the jury and and that's that's my issue it's i'm not saying that she broke any rules in the interrogation i'm just saying that those appeals are not necessarily um appropriate to uh expose to the jury should i respond to him? okay uh, tell me again how it's future dangerousness well, it, it's it's an improper appeal to protect the community. It's 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 creating the impression in the juror's mind 
that the police are out here protecting children um, and that these gentlemen and his back and forth between um, Mr. Copeland and other individuals and, and the state would say individuals seated back here and this other group are putting these children at risk. And what I'm saying is if the uh, if investigator Gaither was on the stand and said, you know what really bothers me about these things that I've been investigating all these years, it's that these bullets come out of these guns and they're coming at children's heads. We would all jump up and say, objection, objection. That's improper. What, what is she saying on the stand? So I don't, I don't know why it's allowed in just because it's on a tape as an out of court statement. It's still I, making the same I don't appeal. think she's making a general, I don't think she's, that uh, she being gay through. I don't think she's making an individual appeal for protection of the community. I think she's making an individual appeal to him because he's the victim of a crime, a purported crime at that point in time. So, but I, I, I've heard your argument. I'll, I'll, I haven't made a decision as of yet. State? Yes, Your Honor. So I want to address a few things. First, this future dangerous argument is not a proper argument for what occurred in the interview room. Future dangerousness solely talks about an open and closing argument referencing to the jury that if you don't find these defendants guilty, then this will occur in the future. That is, that is what future dangerousness references. It has no bearing on an investigator who's trying to investigate a crime appealing to the victim as to why he should come forward with who harmed him. That is what Detective Gaither was trying to do. Secondly, Your Honor, the defense early in our trial made a number of cross-examination efforts to talk about police officers and the fact that they only target a community, that they only arrest certain types of individuals. And what this, invest what this video shows, m most importantly, is that she was trying to get Mr. Copeland to identify who did this. But secondly, that the police aren't just trying to arrest people. They are not just trying to get individuals charged with crimes, but yet they are trying to investigate crimes, hold individuals accountable, and make sure that those who are victims are, are no longer victims. And so what... Detective Gaither is doing in this portion is appeal, trying her best to appeal to Mr. Copeland, who has some concern about giving up an individual who is concerned about snitching. And that's what you're going to see later on in this interview. And she's trying to get him to identify who did this to her, who did this to him and his child and his child's mother, Your Honor. And so given one Copeland himself on the stand says, in all these interviews, they were just out to get me. They were out to get Thug. They were out to get me. This is a complete contradiction to that because Gaither isn't trying to get him. Gaither isn't trying to just get Thug in this interview. Literally, she's trying to identify who shot him. So one, it's impeachment by contradiction to show Gaither's, um, how Gaither was interacting with him. Two, she was trying to get Mr. Copeland to identify who the person was that he saw shoot at him. She can use certain investigative tools and tactics. Mr. Steele said yesterday, all day long, I want to show that this is how they investigated cases. Well, this is a part of that. This line of questioning is how they investigated cases. And when Mr. Steele says, well, I want to show these bad portions of it, then this is in contradiction to that. This is her using her investigative tools in order to get a, a victim to come forward. So for that reason, it should come in. And then this future dangerous argument is not relevant for what occurred in this courtroom. So for those reasons, Your Honor, we would um, ask to play these portions of the, of okay. the recording. All right. Um, anybody else other than Mr. Sharp wish to be heard on this, on the first three Um Redactions, 35950, 4, 40020, or 40840 to 40940, or 41055 to 41105. Anyone else? Mr. Weinstein? Yes, Your Honor. 
Um, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Williams, Mr. Harvey, and a 105 instruction. Okay. Denied. But I've noted it, sir. I'll give you a, um, a continued objection on that issue. Okay. All right, Mr. Steele. All right, sir. Okay. Um, for the reasons articulated by the state in terms of identification or impeachment by contradiction, um, I don't believe that it's, that future dangerousness applies for this particular portion of the transcript. I'm going to authorize or allow the state to play those particular portions over objection. I'll give you all continuing objection as to that. 